Hi, I'm Sean, electrician with Heritage Home Service. And today, we're gonna to be talking about portable generators. We're gonna be talking about the different ins and outs of generators and different safety precautions we can take while using the generator and different ways we can power up your home. So let's take a look. All right, so we're working with our Generac generator. We've got a GP8000E. So the GP stands for gas powered. 8000 stands for the amount of watts that this has. It's important to select the right size generator for your home. The E stands for e-start. Now this is a pretty handy feature that we have here. We have the switch here and the connected battery. This helps your generator start right up by a push of a button. Most generators are equipped with a rip cord on the side and this helps avoid that. Let's talk about our connections. We have two standard GFI receptacles here. These are just like standard plugs that we find in our home. Uh, they're 120 volt. You can plug the device right in or use an extension cord. Downside to that is trying to find those extension cords when the power goes out and then deciding what device to power up. Um, imagine yourself in the driving rain or harsh snow of the winter, finding those cords. Then we have to open up a window through our, our house or leave a door open so we can have these cords run through our home. There's a pretty handy solution that we have here. There's a 30 amp twist lock plug that we have here. And then we have a special plug that we have or a cord. This 30 amp twist lock cord can power up an inlet that is on the side of your home to power up a interlock system or a transfer switch. These connect to circuits throughout the home, either a hard wire like a furnace or a boiler or hot water heater, and also other circuits like your TV or your internet. All right, let's assume the power's gone out and let's get the generator hooked up to the home. All right, so we're down here at the main breaker box and we have installed a interlock kit. Uh, during all of our installations, we'll install the instructions right there on the door for you so you can always reference us. This is always important to maintain and follow the rules. You can overload the generator and the generator will lose power if you improperly start it. So first thing we want to do is turn off all the circuit breakers. So all of the branch circuit breakers we want to turn off, we're going to hold off on turning off the main breaker right now. All right, let's go outside and start that generator. All right, now we're ready to connect our generator to the home, but let's go over some important safety tips first. All combustion engines like this portable generator here put out carbon monoxide, which can be harmful in high amounts. It's important to always have these outdoors and away from many structures, five feet away from the house and always have the exhaust port facing away from the home. A cool feature on this generator here is the CO sense. If it notices a buildup of CO, it will actually turn off the generator to eliminate those harmful gases. Let's hook up the generator to the house. First thing we want to do is make sure that this line will match up with the other one. So we're going to take this, open up our inlet here and line that up. Just push it in and then we're going to twist. Give it a pull and make sure it doesn't pull away. We're going to head back to the generator and do the same thing on the other end. We're gonna find our notch and we're gonna put it into the plug. Give a nice little twist and a pull and make sure the cord isn't coming out. All right, so the first steps to start up the generator, we want to ensure that our fuel line is on and the choke lever is in the choke position. Then you can either do a pull start or on this generator, we're gonna use the e-start. Next thing we're gonna do is use that electronic start and start up the generator.
put the generator out of choke and into run. The generator is good to go. Let's go indoors. All right, now that our generators start up, let's head downstairs and transfer the power from street power to generator power. All right, so we're back from starting up the generator. First thing we want to do is engage the interlock kit. So we're going to turn off the main breaker. Next thing we're going to do is slide the interlock kit up and the interlock breaker on. Now the house is being powered by the generator. Let's go ahead and turn on the smaller branch circuit breakers. The house is now being powered by the generator. All right, we've just heard from the utility company. Power's been restored. Let's show you how to turn off that generator. All right, I've turned off the generator. First thing we're gonna wanna do is put the generator back in the choke and turn off the fuel line on the side. Next thing we can do is take out the cord and go to the cord on the house and twist that and pull that out as well. Next thing we're gonna wanna do is go down to the basement and restore power. All right, so power's been restored. We've already turned off our generator outside. So first thing we're gonna do is turn off all the branch circuit breakers. So let's go through the steps. First we're gonna do is turn off the generator breaker. We're gonna slide the interlock system down. Then we're gonna restore street power by turning on the main breaker. And then the next thing we can do is turn on all of our main branch breakers here. Now we're back on street power. All right, so we're all set here today. We've gone through the startup of the generator, how to turn off the generator when the utility power has been restored, and some key safety tips. If you're interested and you already have a generator and would like to get rid of those cords, we can find a generator hookup solution for you. If you need a generator, we have a blackout bundle, which would provide the generator a cord, and the means to hook up to your home. If you're interested, give us a call or find us online. I hope you found this useful and thanks for watching.